Google is rolling out recommended investment strategies in the interface to show how incremental funds can impact your campaigns over a short period of time. Now, this might not be the broadest reaching tool, but in some scenarios, if you have an influx of funds or if you're trying to hit a certain performance metric in a short period of time, this could be a really cool feature for you to use. So in this video, I want to show you where investment strategies live, talk about how they work and discuss when they might make sense in your account. Investment strategies are one of the features in Google ads that requires certain things to be happening with performance in your account for them to show up. So because of that, we're going to be in a live client account. I'll have to have some things blurred out, but you'll still be able to understand what's going on. And we'll talk through how these campaigns are performing compared to their goals, all this sort of stuff. So you'll get what the gist of the tool is going to be. So first let's find where this new investment strategy lives and talk about what it's supposed to do. We're going to navigate over to the recommendations tab and right up here at the top under the recommendations heading, you'll see three new tabs for recommendations, the investment strategy we're going to talk about and auto apply settings. Now this new feature is rolling out with this new organization. If you have the previous iteration of Google ads that does not have investment strategy, auto apply settings will not show up here. They will still be in their tiny little icon over here up on the right. If you're interested in learning more about the auto apply settings, you can check out the top of the screen right now. But for today, we want to focus on investment strategy. So let's click here. And now we get a view of what this tool is going to look like. Let's open this up just a little bit and learn more about it since that's what this video is designed to do. So effectively, an investment strategy is trying to help you spend additional investment within your account in a short period of time, while also trying to focus on the primary metric for your campaigns that you've been trying to hit. Now, one thing you'll notice is that this is intended to maximize the performance of campaigns that are currently limited by budget. If I scroll down here, you can see that I only have one campaign here at the bottom, which we'll get to this in a minute. But this account has tons of campaigns that are live in it, maybe 40 campaigns that are live. And they're only making the suggestion for one of the campaigns that is currently limited by budget. So this is a very targeted tool and isn't quite the increase your budgets across all of the campaigns type of feature that we may have seen in the past. Now, really quickly, I'm going to hop into an account that has investment strategy available, but does not have capped budget. And effectively, this is what your screen is going to look like. None of your campaigns are limited by budget, so you're not going to have anything show up in the investment strategy. Now, one of the main reasons that I wanted to show this is because yes, this account does not have campaigns that are capped by budget, but it's for a certain reason. If I navigate back to the campaigns tab in my bid strategy type column here, you can see that we are using maximize clicks, maximize conversions and maximize conversion value. I'm not going to go super far into these different bidding strategies because we do have a video that covers all of the Google ads bid strategies. You can check that out at the top of the screen right now. But one of the fundamental pieces about these three bid strategies is that they are never going to be flagged as limited by budget because of the nature where Google is trying to spend your entire daily budget while getting as many clicks, conversions, or as much conversion value as possible. One of the features of that is that it's just never going to tell you that it's limited by budget. I do have a daily cost column that shows up here that shows that we are spending $153 on average in a campaign that has $150 allocated to it. We are maximizing that spend. And I know for a fact we could spend more than this, but Google will not flag this as limited by budget. So if you're using one of these bid strategies, just know that you'll never see anything show up in the investment strategy section. Okay, back to our original account. Let's start talking about what we can do with this feature. Overall, there's only a few toggles that you can do. The first thing you're going to do is choose your primary metric and then an investment amount or a target goal count. So right now it's defaulted to conversions, but you do have three options here it can be conversion, conversion value, or clicks. For right now, let's go ahead and stick with conversions because that's usually what my accounts are trying to focus on. And right off the bat, Google is going to show you what the estimated additional weekly cost could be, and it will have it maximized. So it's always going to be all the way over to the right, but this is just a simple toggle to where you can pull things down put them back up. But effectively, the way that you read this is that if you are willing to invest an additional in this account, $8,000 a month, you could expect to get 17 and a half additional weekly conversions. All of this is going to be incremental on top of your existing campaign performance. And since we only have one campaign that shows up here, this is very easy to look at. So effectively, it's saying that we should shift from our $450 current daily budget to a budget of 
about $2,100 per day. When you add up all that incrementality, it averages up to about an additional $8,000 a week. You can then see what the average weekly cost is, which Currently, right now, it says it's about $2,000. I don't think that's actually accurate, but we would then be going from a little under seven conversions per week to 17 and a half conversions per week. Now, if you look up here additionally, you can see the totals of what that would look like. If it's not easy for you to see the incrementality, you can look up here and see what this new spend and performance would translate into. So according to this, you would go from about $2,000 in spend to about $10,000 in spend. That's where they get that additional 8K. Weekly conversions would go from just under seven to 24. And then this is the part that I find very interesting. Your current CPA would go from $299 to $415. Now, for those of you who don't want to see your cost per conversion go up, remember, this campaign is not using maximized conversions. It's actually using target CPA. And if we go back and take a look at that campaign, it's going to be this one highlighted on the sheet. You can see that the portfolio CPA for this is actually 750 bucks. So even though our current CPA is extremely low and Google is suggesting that we should increase our spend, get more conversions and our CPA should go up, it's actually still within the target CPA that we have set for this campaign. So this is not suggesting that we should increase our CPA beyond what we have told the platform is profitable. And this is one of the features within this investment strategy that I think is a very smart move by Google so as not to make us advertisers mad. We're not gonna spend tons of time in this help article because there's enough to go on in the platform, but you can see here this target adherence section in this keep in mind area. For campaigns that are using target CPA or target ROAS, the budget suggestions aim to keep performance within your set targets. So in the campaign example that we used, if additional spend would have pushed the new effective CPA beyond that 750 of my target, in theory, Google would not have suggested that to me because that performance is not within my goals. Maybe they would suggest that instead of spending $8,000 more a week, we could spend $4,000 more a week and keep the CPA within our target range. I'm not entirely sure how that would work, but this investment strategy is kind of being part of this new school of Google features that's being rolled out with advertiser incentives in mind. Now, if you work at Google, don't come for me. That might be a bold statement. But over the past couple of years, we've gotten way more insights into performance. We're not having controls taken away. And we're finding new opportunities like this investment strategy that when they suggest that you spend more, it's still within the bounds of the targets that you've set for the account. Quite frankly, that's all I ask for. Most of the time we're getting automated suggestions that don't take our goals into account. This one finally does. And I think that's excellent. Now, like I said, if you don't have an additional $8,000 a week to spend, maybe you only have an additional $2,000 a week. You can pull this all the way down, see what it looks like. And now we're going to say CPA is probably going to stay about the same, but we should get almost double the conversions because we're doubling the spend. So this tool does build in incremental cost because you'll notice that we can spend double the budget, keep the CPA the same. But if we start getting too much higher, the CPA is going to start to rise. And Google knows that those additional conversions will start to be more and more expensive for each one. But overall, it'll average below our goal. Now, you can come at this from a different direction. Let's say that instead of having additional cost, you say, what would it take to get an additional 10 conversions a week? Then all you'd need to do is pull this slider down here, get to your 10 mark, maybe a little bit above it maybe a little bit below it. But Google says that it would take almost 3000 additional dollars per week to get those 10 more conversions. Maybe that's well within the range that you want because that's more than doubling your current weekly conversions and your CPA, Google says is going to be the same. So overall, this is designed to help you see how you can spend more, but not go too far beyond your goals. Now we did say that there are other metrics that you can do in here. So if we come down here to clicks, this account also has clicks available. Now you can see that there are two campaigns that are showing up and Google thinks that this one we could get five more clicks and the previous campaign where you're using, we can get upwards of 3000 more clicks. I don't have any accounts currently that have more than two campaigns that are being shown up here, but this will be pretty helpful so you can see what's going on. You can start to just choose one campaign versus the other. And here, if I start to move this toggle, it'll show me that this campaign cannot get the volume that you need by itself. 
That's what this little warning is going to pop up and say. They distributed the additional weekly cost across other more efficient campaigns or shared budgets because you wouldn't be able to get that type of thing out of just this campaign. So overall, this feature is pretty easy to use. The last thing I want to show you is why you should use this feature compared to the performance planner, which is designed to help you understand what future performance could look like. Down here in this table, you can see the differences between investment strategy and performance planner. Investment strategy is designed to only tell you what a budget increase is likely to do in the next seven days, and you can directly implement the changes from that area. It's only allowing you to see what a budget increase would look like, and it's only showing you the constrained campaigns within an account, and it's not really showing you how to reallocate amongst your campaigns. Performance Planner, on the other hand, is meant to be short and long-term, where you can forecast up to 18 months, so quite a big difference compared to investment strategy. You can adjust for bids and budget here, but you're not able to implement things directly from the Performance Planner. You have to take your findings there and go implement them in the account yourself. And the Performance Planner is available for all the campaigns in your account or your MCC, not just the budget constrained campaigns. And there is some suggestion for budget reallocation to try and get performance out of those campaigns. Quite a big difference between these two, investment strategy, short term, budget only, hitting a performance goal for a very short period of time. Performance Planner is more forecasting, understanding what either the next week or next almost year and a half is going to be. So as I mentioned earlier, this new investment strategy piece might not be for everybody. Maybe you're using bid strategies that aren't capped by budget, or maybe you don't ever get budget influxes. Maybe you're not using bid strategies that are capped by budget, or maybe you're always just hamstrung for budget and you just really can't add anything additional in there. But for those of you who do find over a short period of time that you've got big spurts in traffic or you expect things to come down the pike, or if from time to time you get maybe leftover budget from other accounts or other marketing efforts, that happens to me quite a bit. This feature will now allow you to see where you'll get the most bang for the buck based on your performance metrics that you're trying to hit in your account over that short period of time and allow you to implement it effectively and quickly. I haven't tested the investment strategy feature myself to see if the results actually are similar to what it suggests it's going to be, but I am excited to give it a shot because I do think it could be a really cool tool for people that need to get quick performance with that additional spend in a cost-effective manner. If you have any additional questions about the investment strategy section of the Google Ads interface or anything else within Google Ads, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.